in this video, we will look at how can we use the second method to create the frequency distribution for quantitative data. So here, I'm listing another way to define the classes. So in this case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight different classes. So the difference from the first example and the second example is my class width are changed. So you can see for the second class, what is the class width? Yes, the class width is 0.5. So the best way to calculate the class width is trying to look at the upper limits of each class and then try to find the difference between the, the two classes' upper limits. So for instance, the second class upper, upper limits is 1, and the third class, the class upper limit is 1.5. So 1.5 minus 1 equal to 0.5. So we know the class width is equal to 0.5. So why we need this information? Because we will use this information to help to guide us to use uh, guide us to finish the frequency distribution using the second method. So first, go to Insert tab, find Insert tab, and then find the Pivot table. Choose Pivot table, and now in the Pivot table dialog, so we only need to finish uh, select the table range. So which is where is your data set? As we talk about, so we are for this practice, we are only looking for the variable GPA. So my data range, the range, the table is my B column. So uh, select this little icon and select from B1 to B121. And then click this little icon and then click OK. So now you will find on the right hand side, you have one more extra area, which is called pivot table field. And on the top area, there is one uh, item you're familiar, which is GPA. So that is exactly what we just selected. That's my variables. So what you're going to do is first uh, uh, select the GPA and then drag it down to the rows. So drag it down to the rows. So then you will see the instant change on your left hand side, which is the row labels. So they change into the observations values 0.5, 1.486. So they are my 121 observations, 120 observations, and uh, uh, they are uh, they are sorted uh, by uh, they are ordered by the they are listed by the descendant orders, and then choose the GPA again, and then drag it down to values. So now you can see the change on your left hand side. So you have one more column is called the sum of the GPA. So now if you think about the frequency distribution for quantitative data, so what are you doing? So you are doing something called grouping, right? You're grouping the data based on how you define the classes. But if you look at your classes on your first column, there is no class. So everything, every observation is considered as one class. So that's not what we're looking for. So in order to create the class like 0 to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0.1 to 1, and we need to group in my labels. So choose one of the value on your first column under the row labels, any values. So let's choose 1.486 and right click the mouth, right click the mouth. And then you will find one option called group. So choose group. So now you have this dialog. So I will explain what they are. So the starting value is the lower limit of your first class. The so lower limit of your first class. So if you look at here, so the lower limit actually is zero. So let's see, it's zero. And the ending at, so this is your upper limit of your last class. So the upper limit of your last class, which is four. So we don't need to change it. This is four. And the by, the by actually stands for your class width. So class width. So in this practice, we choose the class width equal to 0.5. So then you change one to 0.5. And then you can click OK. So now you can see the first column changed. So you can see this is what we are looking for. So since we don't have observation from 0 to 0.5, so that's why uh, when you 
uh, design this table, there is nothing show up in the first class. But starting from the second class, 0.5 to 1, 1 to 1.5, 1 1.5 to 2. So that's exactly what we are looking for here. So now look at the second column. You will find there are some mistakes. So they are not my frequency, right? The frequency has to be integer. And also we know we have total 120 observations. But here, the total observation is 368.886. So that's not my uh, observations. So what happened? So we need to do a little bit of adjustment before we can see this is a frequency distribution. Choose one of the value under the sum of the GPA. So let's say let's choose 33.796. And then right click the mouse. And then you will find there is one option called the sum value by. So now you should understand why we got 368.388. Because the values represent the sum of your observations. We don't want that. What we need is count. So we choose count. Now we convert the sum value to count. So they are the frequency for each classes. They are the frequency to each classes. So now, well, based on the uh, frequency distribution you have here, and then you can generate the uh, histogram. So first, select both columns without selecting grand total. So the grand total doesn't tell us anything about each class. So they just tell us how many observations we have totally. So make sure you only select the, the observation, uh, the first and second column without the grand total. And then go to insert, and then find the chart area, choose the first one, and call the col bar and the column chart, and then choose the simplest one, the first one. So now we have my, not sure like a histogram, but it's not exactly, because you can see the gap between bars, so you still need to do one more adjustment. Choose one of the blue bar, left, double click, left, double click. Left double click the, your mouse, and then you will see this dialog called the format data point, and then choose the first one called the series option, and then uh, make sure the gap width changing to zero. So changing, type in zero and push enter. So now this is the histogram for my data set. So this is the second method. So obviously, usually I will try to use the second method because the only information you need to know is the class width and also the minimum and the maximum value for your uh, for your data set. And then you will be able to generate the frequency distribution and the histogram. So for the first method, you have to know the upper limit for each class. And also the upper limit for each class, they have to be able to reach to the upper limit. So if the upper limit is cannot be reached, is not attainable, so you will have trouble to use the first method.